The Morning Dish. He's the hardest working man in show business. His band's music takes you into the midnight hours. And when you wake up, his voice is back on your radio alarm clock. How on earth did this happen? Well, Jeff saw me taking out the trash at the radio station. And he won another award. But this one is better. I'm your food man. That's what I am. It's the Morning Dish with the 2019 Radio Personality of the Year winner, Stephen Phillips. You paying attention to this, Packy? And Murphy's own Sherry Rains. Yeah, you must have given horseback passes to the right guy, Stephen. Well, giddy up. <laughs> And Packy Smith's Shetland Pony is right alongside. You guys know these demo tapes don't just edit themselves together, right? Well, all right. Three cheers for Stephen Phillips. Y'all need to help Stephen Phillips out over there. Out the door and off the radio. Here's Stephen Phillips. All right, we're back with you. I'm excited to have a friend of mine, Christopher Martini, all the way from New York City on with us again this morning. How are you, brother? I'm doing very well, Stephen. Thank you for having me back on the show. Man, really I'm telling you. appreciate it. I'm excited. You've got a lot of stuff going on. You actually got down our way the other day. I was hoping to get come see you, but it didn't work out that good. But anyway, you were down in South Georgia shooting a, a music video? Yeah, I was uh, I was shooting and directing a uh, music video for Ryan Weaver, right. uh, who's a country artist. Uh, he's also a veteran and uh, two-time uh, gold star family member. So oh, Lord. Uh, he lost two family members in Iraq. And uh, it was a powerful song that he wrote called uh, Let's Talk About Heroes, right. uh, honoring our military, our, our law enforcement, EMTs, and fire departments. He's a uh, Really great project to work on. Can you imagine being a, a two-time gold? I mean, if people don't realize what Gold Star Family is, they've actually lost people in the military. I got to know Ryan a little closer on this shoot, and um, I can say that he's he's just a spectacular human being. Anyone who's gone through what, what he has and has risen above it and kind of taking those life challenges and using that in his... Uh, in his music and his his life, he's also a motivational speaker. Um, has just you know, from what I see, transformed him into a spectacular human being. Well, now you do a lot of stuff with the with the vets. I mean, a lot of stuff. Your movies are pushed that way or guided towards that way. I mean, you do. How did you get involved with that so heavy? And was you in the military at one time, or is this just something that caught your heart? I didn't serve in the military. Uh, my grandfather was a World War II veteran, and I, I grew up with him partly. Uh, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents. Uh, I even lived with them when I was younger, so he, he definitely made a huge impact on me. He was in the Navy. He was, on a, he was a gunnery officer on a Liberty ship stationed off in New Zealand during World War II. And, you know, he was a traditional Irish American, very patriotic. You know, I remember as a kid, I remember him every morning, like clockwork, going out to get the paper outside and, and he would raise the flag every single morning. So, you know, I think I think more than any anyone, it was my grandfather that, that made an impact on me. And then as I, you know, pursued a film career, uh, I went to NYU and as I started making films, you know, the, 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 ta- the subject of veterans really interested me. And so as I embarked on, on telling stories about veterans, I started to talk to more veterans right. and started to talk to more people in the military. And I think that through talking to them and, and learning about their experiences, that I was able to fill somewhat of a void in my life for not having served. And, you know, I guess I just realized that with my camera, I could, you know, tell stories and do my part to try to, you know, defend our liberties in the same way that, that they do. I love it. Now, your stuff is on, I mean, Amazon, I guess it's on all the outlets that people can go and watch some of your movies that you've already done. But now you've got a new thing that you're fixing, a new project that you're fixing to uh, start. Can you talk about that, any? Um, I I just signed on to uh, shoot and direct a documentary uh, for a local artist. I live in New York, right. and uh, there's 
there's an artist in Staten Island named Scott Lebedo, uh, who is actually also very involved in the veteran community. And his he does a lot of political artwork. He's pretty controversial. Right. Uh, he's been protesting since the 60s. I, I'm not, wait, wait, not the 60s. He's not that old. Maybe... Uh, maybe 80s. I, I don't. I don't know for sure. But he he's done a lot of you know protesting. But he's also driven across the country and painted giant American flag mur- murals all over the country on VFW posts. Um, he's gotten awards from veteran groups, and I think he I think he's created the biggest U.S. flag mural, and it's on a on a warehouse top in texas somewhere but right. i was really attracted to him he's he's kind of like my father my father was a sculptor from rome who was always getting into trouble yeah, he, was and, a, uh, he was definitely a mess your dad i guarantee it he was a trip <laughs> <laughs> my dad was always uh pushing buttons pushing boundaries and that's kind of what scott does and um look I, you know i really i respect the guy you know a lot of people look down on our flag which I think is the most insane thing. It's absolutely crazy for me to think about that, but people are, you know, offended by the side of it. And I just, I love Scott, right. uh, you know, because he's just, he's painting these giant U S flags and doing these other political artworks, pushing people's buttons and putting it right in their face. Right. So I, I, I really admire that. And I, I've decided, you know, that I want to tell his story. But, you know, that's the thing about it. You talk about that. But a lot of people that come to America are proud to be Americans because they come from these countries that they didn't have the freedom that we have, and they understand where it comes from. And uh, a lot of people don't realize, just like this this guy you're talking about, you just done this video in Georgia. I mean, he lost two of his family members to defend our freedom. You know, that's something people don't – I don't understand how you can't put that in your mind. It's just crazy. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think that – you know, most of the people that are burning the flag and looking down on the flag, you know, are, well, I don't know, I don't want to speculate, but I, I don't think that they are the immigrant communities. And I think if you ask the immigrant communities, you know, they're some of the most patriotic people yeah. you can imagine because they're so glad to be here. They know what, you know, life is like on the other side. And they know how much better it is here. Of course, I'm, I'm speculating, but right. um, I think it's mostly, you know, the, the, the people who have kind of grown up here with all the luxuries and comforts that this country affords that are out in the streets are the ones that are trampling on the flag. Um, and I, you know, I've never, it bothers me. I've never really understood it, but I, I do know that, you know, this is a great country and I'm going to try to, you know, teach my son and, and teach, you know, whoever I can just, you know, how wonderful it is and how, how hard it was to get to this point, you know. You do a good job too. And, and you got the movie uh, Trooper, I think it is Trooper. And then uh, if, if y'all folks want to know about his dad, he actually did a documentary and it was worth, it's worth watching. What was it? What was the name of the... <laughs> that you done on that it was it was I, I i titled it the tree of art yeah and and without giving away too much of the movie although i think i'm going to give away something because this might entice people to see it um you know my dad was accepted into the venice biennale uh which is the biggest art show probably in the world i would say and you know he was a sculptor from rome and he was accepted in in this, you know, in this prestigious show at 73 years old. So he basically had like, you know, we had three months. He had three months to make this sculpture and get it to Venice. And uh, of course, my father always getting into trouble. They tried to kick him out of the show, but he kept going. So I was filming the whole thing. It was this giant sculpture that he spent way too much money on, and. Uh, you know, we were transporting it down the canal in Venice and while they were trying to kick him out of the show. And then, 
Well, I'm giving away the whole movie. You're giving away the whole movie. movie. Yeah. You got it. You got to see it. Yeah. You know what? I'm not going to say why it's called the tree of art. You'll just have to see yeah, it. Yeah, you'll see it. They'll be worth it. I guarantee it. So, so let me ask them, how you like Georgia, man? Is this the uh, first time you ever been down this way or? I am going to try to convince my wife to move to Georgia. I want so badly to get out of New York City at this moment. This is just a very unhappy city yeah. for so many reasons. And, um, you know, when I went to Georgia, it was like seeing the light on the other side. and Just everyone was so nice. The whole town came out in Claxton. The whole two towns of, like, Claxton and Glenville yeah. showed up to help us on our shoot. You know, the mayor showed up. We had the police department, the fire department, the EMTs. Like, they pretty much gave us the whole town. They were closing streets while we were flying drones and, yep. you know, like, driving all the fire trucks and police vehicles down the street. And, you know, people were donating food. And it was actually some of the best barbecue I've ever had in my life. There you so go. That's for one reason only, that might be the reason I, I moved to Georgia. Yeah, it's called Southern Hospitality, I guarantee. Of course, you know, there's a lot of movies being shot, man. We just had one here just recently, just released, that was shot here in this Hiawassee, you know, a full-length movie. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's a place to, because there are a lot of lot of tax breaks for films and stuff like that that uh, they're doing right now. So it's a good place. And then you got, What is the movie that was filmed? Filmed uh, in Georgia. Oh, let me see. Let me, I have to look it up and just see. It was just. Uh, it was filmed right here in in the uh, in the local area. Uh, what is it? Well, called? I'm going to be back. I'm going to be back. I'm going to encourage everyone to film in Georgia. Mm-hmm. You know, the caterers who I just loved on this shoot. Uh, I told the, them that I would be telling every movie company to use them. Yeah. And I think right after this shoot, they they purchased a catering truck like a big movie catering truck right. so that they could do do a uh, film work which i think was so cool but yeah. yes i'm going to be trying to film in georgia yeah it's called again this, for sure this world alone is just coming out i think it's just releasing right now but it's actually all shot right here in towns county where i live at so it's pretty cool i guarantee you that's great yeah but I, well you know when you, when you're making a movie you know even if you have like I guess the biggest budget that I've ever worked with is uh, $2 million on a film called what, what the night can do, which we shot in West Virginia. Mm-hmm. But even when you have like a couple million bucks, which that's just scraping by when it comes to a film, because that money just starts flying out, out the door once you start shooting. So, you know, what you really need is when you film as a place, you know, where you know, people aren't going to rob you and, right. you know, and charge you too much. And, you know, you need a place where, like, you know, people are going to come out and support and help out in any way they can. And you also want to put a lot back into the community, give people jobs, right. give them more experience in the film industry. So just all around, it's a better, you know, it's it's, it's a better location than, say, filming in New York City where... Everybody's got their yeah, hand everyone. up. <laughs> yeah, you know, I have a funny story about filming in New York City. I made a short comedy about my father, my father's pasta sauce company that he called Pasta Light. So it was basically a failed business venture um, that, you know, he made these pasta sauces that on the bottle it said, made in New York by authentic Italian chefs. And it was my brother and I... <laughs> in a warehouse in Brooklyn, you know, and he made us kind of go around New York city, spooning it onto crackers, giving it to people on the street. It was totally humiliating. So I made this comedy about it called pasta light that, um, ended up doing really well. They showed it on Alaska airlines. It's on Amazon and it's actually getting a lot of, uh, a lot of views. But, um, but why the reason I'm telling you this is that, you know, I made this film shortly after my dad passed away, and it was this great family experience for my brother, my sister. My sister did the costumes. My brother, who's an actor, played my dad. My nephew was the star of it, and my other nephew was in the camera department. And we were making this film to sort of grieve the loss of my father. 
Right. And while we were while we were shooting, we shot in this loft in in Soho in like Manhattan, and the location owner. I, I decided that I was going to pay fifteen hundred dollars a day to use a loft in New York City because this film meant so much to me. It was about my dad. Right. So I thought I was doing a great thing, giving this guy like a really decent location fee for his loft. Once we started shooting, this guy started adding on, you know, if we went a minute over, he charged us overtime. If we added this and that, he charged us more. And, you know, he just kept adding on things. And I said to him, I said, this film is about my my dad. It's a short comedy about my father who just passed away. We are not Paramount Productions, right. you know, Paramount Studios. So anyways, that's a little taste of what you get, you well, know, when you film in New York as opposed to Georgia. Everybody you know, where, well, we've yeah. got to, uh, man, we got to get to a break. Tell these folks how they can get up with you and follow some of the stuff that you've got going on. You can go to my website, uh, triplemartiniproductions.com, T-R-I-P-L-E-M-A-R-T-I-N-I productions.com. Uh, and all my, my films are on Amazon, uh, but actually, if you go to Vimeo On Demand and look me up, you know, Christopher Martini, Triple Martini Productions, then a lot more of the revenue goes to the filmmaker, filmmaker and you won't be supporting a company like Amazon, who's evil. There you go. Ah, right, man, we appreciate you calling, man. I really guarantee it. We'll be talking to you get down this way. Steven, thank you so much and look forward to doing this again. Thank you for spending a little time with us. And remember, you can tune in every morning at WJULradio.com at 8 a.m. Eastern. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook, The Morning Dish.